Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the speakers, the teachers, and the students who've joined us today. We're very excited to have all of you. Uh, welcome to the Future Career Snippets Students Chat with Experts, organized by the SEER STEM Alliance Scientix and STEM Career Advisors Network. So today we have two speakers from the field of STEM with very varied experiences who have um, very interesting educational qualifications and their work is quite interesting also, if I may say so. So uh, very soon we will be speaking to them and they will answer all the questions from teachers. Before we go ahead, uh, hello from, hello to Irina, hello to all the teachers. Uh, so before we go ahead, I would like to remind everyone, all the teachers to keep their video and audio off. This session is recorded. So if teachers want to share this with other teachers and other students, you can do that. We will send you the recording after the session. So I will introduce both the speakers right now. So uh, we have Ovi Barcelo. He is an education solution specialist from Microsoft. Hi, Ovi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for joining morning, us. For inviting me. Yeah. Yes. And we have Nishant, who's a control systems engineer. Hi. Hello, Nishant. Hi, Ashwarya. Hello, everyone. All right. So what we will do is we'll first have Nishant share with us his experiences, his educational qualifications, maybe, and what he likes about his job. Why did he choose? what he chose. What is control systems engineer? So he'll answer all of these questions. I will now stop sharing my presentation. Yeah. I will then share a little something that I prepared. So I hope everyone can see the presentation. Is it visible? Yes, yeah, it's visible. Perfect. Um, so again, hello everyone, a very good morning. Uh, my name is Nishan Chaudhary, and I'm very happy to be a part of this seminar today. I just prepared a small presentation just to give a very basic introduction about myself, and hopefully I can answer then question, uh, answer the question which Ashwari asked. So I originally, my background, I come from India. The name of my city is uh, Indore which is somewhere located over here, almost in the middle of India, just to give everyone a, a picture of where I'm coming from. Um, starting from my education qualifications, my bachelor's I did from 2013 to 2017 in India itself. I did it in mechanical engineering, and my main focus was more on um, manufacturing technologies. As a child, I always used to wonder whenever I used to see big machines like um, ships or aeroplanes. I don't know. I always had this curiosity to think, how are they even making it? Where do they even start making it? It's such a big machine. As a result, I think uh, my direction got aligned towards manufacturing. Um, and that is where I did my bachelor's in. But while, and sorry, just to give an idea, this is a couple of pictures of my university. It's It was quite a new university, so you see a lot of uh, empty land over there, but it was a very good time. And while I was doing that, um, I did realize that I had learned a lot of theoretical knowledge, and I also developed a bit of passion for cars in general. I, I always used to like them uh, from a child as well. So I decided that I would like to pursue further education, maybe in the field of automotive. And I was just looking for programs and the one at TU Delft, which is where I have done my master's from, connected very well to me because they were teaching me about the dynamics of the car and controls of the car. So when I say dynamics, I mean you try to understand how a car moves. You try to uh, understand the equations through which you can calculate how fast the car is moving, how much the car is braking, steering, all the basic things that we do in a car when we drive the car. And as you know, the future is more 
automated driving, things can happen on its own. This automation is coming in many different fields. So the second part of my master's was uh, designing control systems so that the car can steer on its own. It can brake on its own or it can assist the driver. If the driver is unable to do something he or she wants to do, then the control can give that extra help to the driver, which we call assistance controls. So during my two years, I studied this vehicle engineering in uh, a very good universities, uh, in a very good university, Delft University of Technology. Uh, again, just to give people some uh, overview, this is how the university looks like. A uh, really lovely place to be, very intelligent people. And uh, I show the picture on the left because it is kind of iconic, so to say, this cone-shaped building which you see at the rear. Um, that's the library building, and it was always a pleasure to go there and sit down with friends and study as well. Uh, while I was doing my master uh, master's, my professor also put in a lot of faith in me. I was doing well in his class. He also appreciated my hard work. So through him, I got a chance to do my master thesis in Brussels. Actually, in Belgium, I lived for five or six months, uh, more or less. Uh, and I worked with Toyota. Uh, this is quite technical and I don't want to <laughs> bore you guys with the technical part of it. So I'll just keep it uh, short. It was more on designing a, a controller, as I said, which can drive on its own. This controller can steer on its own by itself and it can brake as well. So you can slow down the car automatically and then also you can change lane and um, avoid certain collision. And my aim was to design a controller which is powerful so that in very safety critical scenarios when you're really pushing the car and the driver cannot uh, avoid a collision, the controller should uh, start and it should be able to avoid this collision. So this is just a small simulation, one of the simulation results from my master thesis. I hope it works. So this is a simulation software. It's very standard in the industry. There are other companies also which provide this. Uh, it's called IPG Car Maker. And you will see that the car is at 100 kph right now. It's driving with 100 km per hour. And you already see there is a car in front with which we will collide if we don't do anything. And this is quite an aggressive maneuver. It's very fast. So you will see the car will brake, slow down, then steer and then will slowly accelerate, all uh, happening with the controller that I designed. So here we quickly brake the car. Then you have the steering and braking happening together. The car is stabilized, and then the car starts to go forward. So uh, this is just to give you a picture. If you look at the numbers, you will realize that the car was pushing a lot for normal driving situations, but we were successfully able to avoid a collision. So yeah, this was my master thesis. And uh, while I did my master thesis, I was parallelly also looking uh, for jobs because coming from India, living in Europe, it, it is always hard to find jobs um, because the competition is quite high. But luckily the controller that I was designing was of interest to a fellow Toyota company in Cologne, which is where I did my first job. They had a project which was very similar to what I was working on. And here I spent three years and 10 months of my life, and it was a genuine pleasure to meet people from all parts of the world, to work on very interesting projects, uh, and to develop so many skills. Um, I was also nervous. It was my first job in the beginning, but I only have good memories now. It was a very good time. Just to give some idea to people, um, one of the job was working on the driving simulator. So it's a racing company. Uh, they develop racing cars. Uh, and participate in endurance championship. And before you go on a track, all the professional drivers, they come on a simulator uh, where you have the track on the screen. As you can see, you sit in the car and this environment is very close to how a reality is on the road. So the drivers come here and they train themselves. It's cost effective because even if you crash, you just have to restart the software and uh, you can try and try and get better uh, at your racing before you go on the track. This is the endurance championship car, uh, car number seven, car number eight. 
Previously, the company used to participate in Formula One racing as well until 2009. So there's a very cool museum over there. And this is a picture of that museum. And you can see the car hanging is Formula One and uh, Formula One cars as well here. And this is from last year, uh, the championship winning trophies. They had it on the display at reception and we all got a chance to go there, check it out and take some pictures. So as I, as I say, it was a very lovely time spent over there. Um, my second job, which Ashwarya already mentioned, Hyundai Mobis Group, I just joined uh, three and a half months ago, so to say, July 2023. I'm also there as a control systems engineer. But over here, it has nothing to do with racing. I'm back on passenger vehicle cars, um, which is also challenging and interesting because you have a lot of scenarios to cover. Um, so on the left, the this is a a system which they made, which became very famous actually. It's called crab walking. If you look at this picture, it looks like a crab uh, walking by. And the whole idea is you can just park the car. You don't have to turn or anything. You just stand in parallel. The wheels will turn and then the car slides in. So it's called the e-corner system. I, I haven't uh, done anything about this. This is already what they prepared last year, but I found it really cool. And whenever you develop something, you have to test it on a car. And one of the test tracks we have is in uh, in Germany. It's very close, actually, one and a half hour away from uh, the company uh, from Mobis. Uh, it's in Fetzfeld, and this is a picture of the test track. So I've been there a few times, driven the car, and it's genuinely a lot of fun, actually, to not just sit all the time in the office, but also to go out uh, and do something else for a change. Last, uh, last but not the least, uh, just a little bit more about me, apart from my educational side. Uh, for sure, you need to be educated and learn and uh, everything and get a good degree, which helps, but also you should to develop other skills. So personally about me, I genuinely enjoy traveling and cycling, uh, cooking, and of course, eating. <laughs> it goes hand in hand. Um, I follow Formula One, cricket, tennis, I'm happy to socialize, so I'm very thankful to be a part of this seminar today. And I can communicate in Hindi, English, and in German a bit. Uh, so some pictures of my favorite food, a picture of my city, which is known for the street food in the middle. And as I said, I enjoy cycling, so this was a few months ago. Yeah, that, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Nishant. That was a very interesting presentation. I especially liked the um, uh, crab walking and the simulator. It was nice to see how exactly things work and what you do. All right, now we can move on to Ovi. Would you like to um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and how your career has transitioned? Yes, of course. And and thank you, Nishant. It was uh, it was. Um impressed with your project and, and your city and your food. I am a big Indian food lover, and this is the best food, best food in the planet. Um, so my name is Ovi Barcelo. I am in Valencia, Spain, in the, <clears throat> it's more or less in the East Coast, in the Mediterranean Sea. We're still at 21 degrees, so we're still having a good weather. Even, I don't know if it's good or bad, but we still have a good, a good weather. And, um, and now I am a modern workplace specialist for Microsoft Education covering Western Europe. Uh, Western Europe is a region made of 10 countries across Europe, from Finland to Portugal, all the countries in, um, in the middle. And my responsibility there is making sure that um, schools, universities, ministries of education, they are uh, taking the most out of our technology and and it is well at least i see it's different or curious how my career developed and because i am a primary teacher and my studies are as primary teacher specialized in um physical education so how can i jump from being a primary teacher um, no more than eight years ago to where I am right now. Um, well, I like, I, I'm going to take Nishat's Nishat words about developing other skills. 
Um, I love teaching. I am, if I have to define myself, I am uh, probably a father, a husband, and third, a teacher. And and I live for teaching. I I, I love to be with uh, with kids, and 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 I've been 15, 16 years of my career fully dedicated to education and to the classroom. But um, I always was interested in how to take the most out of the innovation in the classroom. Because we we always try to do something different in the classroom. You're trying many different things. And I'm talking only about technology. I'm talking about different teaching methods and different, different ways of teaching, different scenarios and teaching in the playground or teaching in another building or try to do something different to make our education more complete. And part of that innovation was technology. So um, I was I was uh, investigating a lot. I was trying to put technology in my classroom, but I was trying to do it in a very holistic way, meaning that that I didn't like to put technology just because it's fancy or it's cool. I wanted to put technology because I wanted to my students to get better in that skills that Nisha was referring. So I started introducing technology in my classroom and I and I've been very lucky of uh, my school back at the time supported me a lot on that investigation path. That skills that I learned during the during the way um, made me get in contact with big tech companies. Um, I've been in contact with with uh, Apple, with Google and Microsoft back in that time. But as I said, um, I had one idea in mind in how technology should be implemented. And among all these options I had in big techs, Microsoft was the one that really fits with my idea of how education and technology needs to live together. And then I start working with them and explaining to other teachers because one, other, one of the of the skills that I learned during the way that you need to share what you learn. Because I have what, that thing that is if, if you have if I have um, one apple and I give you my apple to you or an orange. We still have one apple between the both of us. But if I have an idea and I give it to you, we both have one idea. So we have we are sharing sharing ideas is the best thing you can do because you are multiplying uh, your ideas among your community. And that is why I always try to share. And, and that caught the eye of somebody at Microsoft and they asked me to join their team. So eight years ago, I joined Microsoft as part of the educator community in Microsoft Spain, where I spent three years, wonderful years with, um, with my colleagues there. And then I moved to the region, but to the Western Europe. And then I started specializing about the technology, I, I became more freak and more geek. And then I, I like to do things here and there. And I'm supporting customers all over Europe and and, and also in EMEA um, on introducing the technology, but always with that mindset of it needs to be really useful for our students. It needs to mean something. It needs to provide something else. So I'm really happy to be in here uh, helping students to grow in their skills and helping uh, also schools, universities to do it in the most secure way. That is the, the next thing. Once you learn that technology could be very useful in the classroom, then you need to learn how to make it safe and secure and how you, for your students, so you as institution, how to make it secure and safe for our students and also and a, a, a very important thing, how every individual student needs to create their own digital identity. Today we are uh, meeting a lot of people online and our digital identity is as important as our physical identity. If I put my shirt today, even if I'm working at home, is because I want to appear nice to you, as nice as I can be, 
because I, you don't know me and this is the first time you are watching me. And then if I go come here with a uh, old t-shirt, you think, OK, what is this guy? So the same is part of the digital thing. Let's see, you're writing things badly if you don't take care of what you're saying, if you're a bully, if you're a hater. Um, that is your image against the others. So that is also part of my job, how to teach students how to behave on digital uh, in a digital world. Just to wrap up my life, uh, I think that I have on a personal thing, I have two, two things that changed my life that I said if, um, if I want to share with you, uh, that will say one, going out very young and study outside my home. And uh, I went to Sweden and uh, with um, with some colleagues from my university and spent time there uh, when I was 20 years old by my own, very cold, very dark, but it helped me learn a lot. Meeting people from other cultures, meeting people from other parts of the world is super important to grow as a person. And the second is sports. I agree totally with Nishan. And, and from my point of view, um, start thinking of running a marathon is something that really, really um, helped me in my life because it's just a very hard to train, to go every, every day out, no matter if it's raining or it's, it's dark, to train, to work out, to get ready for the marathon. That helps you in your mind and in your body. And it, and it gives you strength to overcome problems because not every day is easy. So that will be my two parts for develop your skills, go out, see other people, see other cultures, learn other languages as much as you can, and also have time for yourself to practice sport, to, to do effort, to, to overcome uh, problems uh, because sports is a funny way to learn it and then transfer that to your, to your life. Thank you, Obi. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, I liked the going out very young to study and explore the world part in particular, because both of you seem to have done that. Both of you seem to have left home to explore new things, to study, and you know, become learn more and tap your potential. Thank you. Looks like we already have a question. So this is addressed, let's say, to both of you. What is a typical day at work like for you? Ovi, would you like to go first? Of course. Um, or Nishan, do you want to go first? And see. OK, no, I, I mean, I can take. I see that you're in spotlight, so you're you know, you're bigger. You go ahead. <laughs> no, both of you are in spotlight. <laughs> oh, yeah, Thank OK. You. OK, you both go ahead. You, yeah. I, I'll give you a few minutes to uh, breathe now. You gave a very lovely introduction, Ovi. It was quite interesting to hear uh, about your uh, story of your life and how you have progressed in your career. Um, good question. What is a typical day at work for me? Um, I mean, there is always an easy answer. A typical day of work will always be uh, go in the morning. I usually what I do is first 20 minutes, I actually read the news, what has happened around the world. Uh, I it's not just the technical side of it that I, I want to improve in, but also you need to know what's happening around you. You need to update yourself. So first 20 minutes is grab a cup of tea and just read what is going on around the world uh, and also look at uh, my calendar and plan my day accordingly. It's always important that I prioritize things because there are three to five things happening parallelly and you need to know which one needs to be prioritized first and accordingly you start working on it. Meetings you try to prepare beforehand, of course. Um, uh, you have usually I think I'm working nine hours if I include the lunch break as well and a bit of uh, tea break and so on and so forth. Uh, but I think my important answer would be how you approach your day at work. I think that makes more of a difference than what are you working on and what is a typical day. Um, I, I realized uh, quite in the beginning that you spend, as I said, nine hours of your day uh, at your workplace. 
and we all are social beings inherently, it is important that you also communicate with your colleagues, you chat around with other people. And that is why luckily my last job and this job, I have both, uh, both the jobs, I have people from all over parts of the world. And that is very interesting. When you have a small tea break or something, you talk for 15 minutes, there's so much to learn from their experiences. And secondly, uh, secondly the every day you try to be curious to learn something new. If that motivation can come every day at work, it will help you move forward. Even at your normal work, uh, be it at the track, when you are at the track, you can simply sit in the car and drive. But you can ask some people what they are doing. You can try something new on the car. It's always that willingness to learn, uh, coupled with the fact that, yes, you, you talk to people, you try to understand what is going on at work. That, I think, helps you move forward. And you will be more productive at work if you have a good work-life, social life balance. So as Ovi said, going for a going for a run, let's say start with a run, marathon would be amazing, but at least a run or sports or gym, whatever works for you, it, it helps you to be motivated at work because a typical day can simply be sitting in front of the laptop, trying to code something, try to make a controller, getting frustrated, it's not working, and then it's a declining slope. That's where that balance of work life, social life helps to keep you motivated and uh, focused, actually. And, and if during at work, if you're still frustrated, then there is no harm if you know your colleague to take a 15 minute break, just have a chat and then get a get a refreshment, so to say. And that helps you move along in your typical day at work. So, yeah, that's from my side. Thank you, Nishant. And what about you, Ovi? What's your typical day like? Well, um, technology is here to help us, and <laughs> and after the pandemic specifically, um, I work at home. I, I'm a home office, so it has this virtual background. But here is my office, my at home, and I I live. I I drive my home to school. Every, my son to school every day, and I'm here sitting down mostly in team meetings. So so. For me, working with customers all over the world and and with teachers all over the world and with colleagues is my normal day. So I spend a lot of hours sitting down here. Um, it's good because I'm I'm at home and I can balance my social life. But I totally agree with Nishar. I mean, I I'm missing this human contact. So so I try to travel and and see my colleagues as much as possible. And and also it's a very important thing. And I want to be super brief with this because it's a sign what Nishar say to find time for you and your family and your sports during the day. I learned one thing. Working in Microsoft, working in a big tech could be super demanding. I don't have schedule. I can work nine or ten or five hours. So it's super flexible. But you need to find time for yourself. The world keeps spinning. Even if it's hard to say, okay, how am I gonna go now for one hour? walk or running or gym or whatever it's impossible because there's a lot of things to do yes please do break fresh up your mind and, and then come back same with your homework students there or with uh, when you're assessing exams i mean yes there's a lot of work to do all we have a lot of work to do but you need to balance your personal and 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 your professional life because for your mindset it's, it's very important you have this break so it is will be my my day. Let's put it this way. Yeah, and just I will just quickly add on to it, Ashwarya, just a minute before we bring the next no, question. No, take your time. It's okay. Uh, it's something I also realized that you know if you want to become good technically, you have LinkedIn Learning, you have courses available on EDX and whatnot, and you can become good at it. But the world is so connected now. It's such an international community. It's not just the technical side uh, when you talk, when you think about work. It's about really how you present yourself, what you learn from others, how you become a part of the team. That's something I think almost every industry is, is looking uh, in a potential candidate. So it's not just the technical side. It's also the social side, which matters a lot because we are such a global community now. Yeah. OK, thanks to both of you for answering this in such a uh, interesting way.
that how life outside of work also has to be thriving. You have to be doing different things and that way it impacts your work also. And we have a second question. So it says, you have both mentioned your contact with influential teachers and professionals. Did you have other important mentors throughout your career? And how did they shape you as a professional? Nishant, would you like to go first? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, I, I'll just start with teachers. Uh, in my bachelor's, there was one uh, university professor who really put faith in me, um, uh, who I could see was always also pushing me, challenging me, but also helping me to grow uh, in my technical side at that point, being purely in the education stream. Uh, he and also when I when you apply for uh, international universities from India, you also need recommendation letter. Um, and he did give to me. Uh, it's always done in secrecy. You get a link and they upload the letter. So I never knew. But at one place, I actually needed to upload a PDF. So I went with very shaky hands and I requested him. Can you please give me that reference letter? Because you should not know what the other is writing for you. He did give to me and then I read that two page and it it was a it was a beautiful experience to just read that how much a teacher can influence you um, in your personal life. It was uh, really special to me. And second, what I mentioned in my master's um, again, you know, you you left your country, your people, everything. It's a totally new environment and you have to prove yourself that why a professor supports you. For example, there are 100 other candidates. What's so special about you? So I also worked equally hard. I did well in my exams. That's that's always an indicator for a professor to know, OK, if a student is technically doing well or not. Uh, for me, exams are always healthy, uh, I always think. And then he was the one who opened the doors for me in Europe to give me this chance in Toyota. And one thing led to another, and now I'm I'm in the working stream. But always to crack that first job, especially when you're a non-European, it's hard. Uh, because of the rules and regulations in Europe. So these two people, hands down, they they shaped up my career uh, where I am. And other mentors, for sure, uh, parents, family. Like st uh, studying as an international student is very, very expensive. Uh, in US, maybe you can get a lot of scholarships, but I think Europe, it's not that much. So to have the financial backing from uh, from my parents, I cannot neglect that even a bit of it because I am again where I am because of them. And also the, the social skills that you learn from an early age to work hard, to be sincere, to, uh, to don't lie, <laughs> all those basic things, you know, they come in handy. They, they, they shape you where you are. So my parents, my two professors uh, and my sister, they are really the ones behind me. Oh, that's so sweet. And Ovi, what about you? Well, I, I would say, I would say something that also helped me in my career. Um, again, uh, Nishar said a very important thing about learning. Save time for learning. Learning always. Learning. Learning always. Whatever you want. If you want to master TikTok, if you want to master a video game, if you want to master whatever. You spend time for learning and knowing deep what you're interested in, right? And that gives me to the oh, brings me to the question. I I I learn and I have um, um, been influenced by everyone in my life, even if it was not very positive at that moment, or even the conversation was bad. Even if you think, oh, this person is not helping me. I try to practice empathy and empathy is one of the things that I believe drives the world. This is my personal opinion. You need to put in the shoes of the, of the other person. Why is this person telling me this? Uh, why is so aggressive or so negative? Or what is his, why is he or he saying this to me? Maybe there is a reason. And whenever you empathize with the other person, when you put on their, in their shoes, then you realize that maybe you have more in common or maybe you realize why isn't a lot under a lot of stress or is uh, I said something that it was not good or appropriate. So again, you can learn from everyone and everyone can give you this little hint that wakes you up and, and make change things. 
but you need to practice empathy. Why this person is helping me, but at the same time, why this helping this person is not helping me? Why are they screaming at me or why they are telling me these such of terrible things? Relax, trying to take perspective and try to learn. Practicing your empathy, I think is very important. Thank you, Obi. I was wondering, uh, before we move on to Luigi's question, uh, what are some key skills that you need in your job? The most important ones. For me, following up, for me, empathy. I am working in a, in a, in a commercial company. I need to sell. I mean, we need to be honest. It's just, it's not all inspiring. I need to sell and, and our computers and our software and our platforms. And this is something we, and, and sometimes that conversations are difficult. Of course, and people say, or oh, you are too expensive, or you are too whatever. Well, uh, practice your empathy. What is this person wants from you? Why is he saying that? And then put on their shoes. I think one of the skills for me, empathy. I like the honesty. All right, Nishant, what about you? Um. So, of course, there are two answers to it. One is the technical side. So uh, I'm mostly working on softwares on which we develop controllers. So you need to know uh, the software for sure and have some experience. That is one skill to have to know the, the technical side of the software. But this you learn over time. That's not a problem. I think because my uh, my current company, we are developing uh, control logics and selling it to other uh, companies such as Toyota, uh, Volkswagen, BMW, all these companies. Uh, so my point being, it is a um, company which generates revenue by selling a product and you have strict deadlines. You have statement of work and you have to work on work on it. Every quarter you have review on what's your status. So based on this scenario, in this background, I think the most important thing I've realized is as you said rightly, honesty and transparency. If you have been given a task and you're struggling in it, better let your counterpart know or your or your manager know because he has to plan and then report it to your customer who is at the end purchasing it. So having that having that trust in your manager is already one thing, and that comes through all these important th things which Ovi and I mentioned. I think honesty, trustworthy. Uh, hard working, uh, these things will build that trust between you and your uh, manager. But then uh, in this kind of environment, which is really focused on the customer, having that transparency with your uh, superiors is very important uh, in my job to let everything go in a in a streamlined flow. OK, and while we're on that, maybe uh, we can you can answer what is the most uh, rewarding aspect of your job and what keeps you motivated? Um, what is the most rewarding aspect of your job? It's basically when you set your eyes on something and you finally achieve it. It sounds as simple as that, but my God, it is rewarding. Um, I, just to give a short example, this is not from my job. This is from my master thesis. I had six months at Toyota to build this controller from scratch. Uh, push, 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 because six months uh, is a short time. After three, three and a half months, I come to a stage where I have designed a controller. I have learned things. I do my first simulation. It's a complete disaster. The car is steering left. The brakes are going right. I have no idea what is going on. God, I, I went home with such a sad face. Everyone could see it, and I was not even hiding it, to be honest with you. I was so sad. Um, at that stage, all you do is take a step back, take a couple of days off because your brain is spiraling right now and you can't understand what. And I I broke everything, all that complex thing I made, I broke it down and I started again piece by piece and this time checking each and everything and really pushing as much because I only have three months left now. After two months, I again piece by piece reach to that level, do my simulation, and voila, it it ran and it finally did what I wanted it to do. And that was the rewarding, that was genuinely the most rewarding experience. When you set your eyes on something, um, you will go through a lot of failure. You need your colleagues. That's when teamwork becomes so handy. When you don't know, they might know. Uh, so work together, try to communicate. And then when you achieve it, 
Yeah, that's great. And then the funny thing is, once you have achieved it, you are like, I can do this, I can do this, I can. Then the brain is working in such a constructive way. That feeling is a very rewarding uh, feeling. And I think it goes hand in hand in what keeps me motivated as well to strive for that, to achieve that target. And what keeps me motivated, uh, curiosity, willingness to learn something new, be it technical, be it non-technical, but just at the end of the year, I, I kind of evaluate myself. Did I learn something new? If not, then it, it feels wrong. Then I want to learn something new uh, next year. And that is something that gives me motivation. And Ovi? I think, again, I, I, I share uh, uh, Nishan's thoughts. He says something very important that is also I learned from the marathon and I learned from my life. That is that sense of achievement, but after a good work. When you when you get something out of, it could be lucky, it could be out of or the efforts of others. But when you realize that due your effort, your learning time, your um, your nights sleeping poorly, your um, effort, your mistakes that you needed to stand up again and go running, and then finally you get it, then is when you really enjoy and motivate you because all the effort is the worth it part. I mean, the re the result is made of on your effort and then you feel super proud. So what keeps us motivated is like, I know that if I learn, if I study, if I balance my life and, and if I do all the things that we have been saying here, whenever the achievement comes, then I will be feeling proud and, and nothing is better than feeling proud of your work. And obviously external recognition, let's be honest, when somebody sees you, working hard and then you achieve it. And then when somebody says, hey, buddy, I saw you there. Wow, that's incredible work. Then you say, OK, they, I've been seen. All the work I've done is been seen. It's not out of a, a, a lucky strike. It is because I've been here all the time communicating and empathizing, blah, 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 blah. All the things that we have said. So yes, completely agree. And and focus on the on the on the process, not only on the final goal. OK, we have another question from a teacher. She asks, what kind of problems do you deal with at work? But the process is not always as good as it, 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 you think it is. The process sometimes is harmed. The, uh, uh, certain things didn't work. Now we have teams, but do you remember in the pandemic? Do you remember the first days, how poorly all the platforms worked? and how everybody was calling me from all over the place like saying hey what is, what is not working so these kind of problems when if you're focused on this little problem in this very moment and you don't you don't broaden your view um that is difficult and that can stress you out and that the exercise of giving perspective and going back and say well this is all part of the process sometimes it's difficult so yeah for me personally when there is a problem it's difficult for me. It's difficult to deal with the problem and provide a broader perspective and the human contact. But I already said that, so let me share to you. Um, okay. uh, and what go kind of, yes, yes. What kind of problems do I deal at work? I think there is one uh, problem which I would say kind of similar to what uh, we said, the bureaucracy part of it. The challenging part is back in Toyota, the parent company is from Japan. So you work in collaboration with uh, fellow Japanese colleagues. Uh, Hyundai is a part with Korea. So you are working a lot with fellow Korean colleagues. They have a totally different working style. They have a totally different working time as in the sense because of the time difference. And this becomes a problem. Communication can become a problem because while it's early morning, it's already evening over there. Um, that is a challenge, actually, to uh, to streamline this process and work together. Secondly, the European working style and the Asian working style are two very different things. 
And me coming from India, living seven years in Europe, I'm seeing both the pictures. So when I'm sitting in the meeting, I can see that lack of communication and different working styles, which is causing issue between, let's say, my manager here and a fellow counterpart in, uh, in the other country. Uh, communication can become a problem. Also, Japan and Korea, not all of them are speaking English, or if they are, they are not very fluent at it. Uh, then communication can also become a problem if you don't have a common language. And lastly, we are working on softwares. Maybe they have designed something, they give me the software, but their design ideas or implementations are totally different. And then I have to decode it. I am struggling. The language is not so clear to understand. This barrier becomes a challenge when you are working with two different cultures. At the same time, it is exciting because that is what you want to learn. So you don't want to give it up. And as you can see, Hyundai, Toyota, all are big companies. They are global companies. They have achieved uh, what they have through this process. So for sure, it is exciting. You need to have a lot of perseverance. Uh, but this is the, the challenge, working with two different cultures. Um, so yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, I had a, a question for Ovi. What are some skills that from your time as a teacher that have helped you in your uh, career now at Microsoft? As I said, uh, we are in a commercial company. And, and sometimes you, there is a trend to oversell, to oversell, right? But like my products are the best and my products are. My experience in the classroom my experience of thinking, OK, is this technology really helping my students to be better? That that uh, part of, of it, stop being a fanboy and a geek and everything is good to be more uh, critic about, OK, mm, this is not the best. That experience, if you transfer to the commercial world, gives you a, makes you a trustworthy person because you are talking out of experience. So even if I'm talking with a Ministry of Education and I'm saying that I was a teacher in a primary school, in a little primary school near home, that experience and that ability to transfer that and get transfer all your knowledge even to the highest level at, at your career, it is very important. So for me was the hands-on experience the learnings I got from the field in being in the classroom that helps me also make me a, a trustworthy partner when when talking about commercial agreements. Yeah, OK, all right. And we have a question uh, thing directed at Nishant. When will uh, a vehicle be produced that could ride with ride without human help? <laughs> uh, very interesting question. Um, um, I would say there are two, actually three factors that are hindering it from the technology part of it, from the mathematical part of it, you already have the math available, which can be modeled in the control system and the car can drive on its own. The problem is you have to put it on a hardware which can run in real time. When I say real time, that means when you're driving, that is your actual time. Uh, when we simulate, we can simulate it very quickly. Uh, you know, which is not real time. So these models, they are mathematically very demanding and we don't have the semiconductor chips, these chips uh, on which we you put your code. Um, these chips, their processing power is still slow. That is why I say that the controller we have is not real time. It, it cannot run in real time. So, but you can see in the past 15 years from uh, five megabyte, uh, hard disk drive to, I don't know, 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. In 10 years, the technological part has changed so much in the whole world. I'm sure the semiconductor industry will also come up with chips um, which can handle such complicated code. So that is the first challenge to have that technical um, part sorted out so that this code can run on a car. Second is a car cannot run on its own if it does not have the environment with which it can communicate. 
it needs to have camera through which it can see what is going on. Now, if you have a road which has no zebra crossing or no signals or, or no signs, let's say 50 kph is the limit, the car wouldn't know. It won't know what to do. So it's not just developing the vehicle itself, it's also improving your environment, your infrastructure. While European countries and US maybe have that infrastructure, many other countries are still struggling with it. And I know some parts in India also will take a long time to get the roads properly developed, to get the signs properly adjusted. Then you can have a car looking through its camera, through its eyes, understanding what the surrounding demands and then can drive it on its own. And the third part, which is also a big part, is the government challenges. For example, if a crash happens, someone gets injured, who is the responsible person? Is it the owner? Is it the manufacturer? Who takes the responsibility? There is a there is other side of it as well, not at all related to technical part. So yeah, I would say the technology is there and it for sure is the future because people have the willingness to have it. The trust will come later because even I will be scared for once to not touch and everything is moving on its own, but the trust will develop in time. It's the infrastructure. It's the computational power and the government policies, which needs to come in place. OK, thank you. That was a question uh, from Irina from Lithuania. Uh, we have a question from Barbara. Barbara, can you tell us maybe on chat where you're joining us from? And she asks, does your work impact on your family life? Indeed. Indeed. Um, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> I am first a father, then a husband, and then a teacher, and then something else. I don't know. Um, and but I remember when I first joined Microsoft that, that this was a family, it was a family project. Um, you, you cannot embrace this with the full agreement of your family. I have one son, and and they know that sometimes I need to work at night, sometimes I need to travel, but we are all in agreement. And and that was part of the deal. Let's put it this way. So so first of all, we need to create with this this these jobs that require so much time um, require also a family agreement. So if we are all on board and we know what we are facing, we are facing this this together with the good and the bad things. And also again, it's time uh, when I said time save time for your personal life and your sports and your mind save time for your family whenever you are with your family you are with your family and you don't have a phone you don't have uh, an eye put on the computer something is coming so even sometimes and i learned that from my father too sometimes it's not the quantity or the amount of time it is the quality of time you spend with your family so when you cannot offer quantity, you need to offer quality. So whenever you're in your family, 100% with them. Nishant, what about you? Yeah, this is a very good question. Thanks a lot, uh, Barbara, for the question. Uh, while Ovi was answering, my mind was also constantly thinking, what, what should I say? Because Ovi and I are in completely two different shoes. I... For I don't think so. Uh, it's anything related to work, so to say, my impact on my family life, because I am living in a completely different part of the world from where they are. And that's why I say it's a different situation compared to what uh, Ovi has. Um, for me, family time already changed when I left for my master's. It's kind of the same as uh, when you're working. Um, I must say uh, two things. One thing is home office helps you. OK, when you are at home uh, and sometimes you are not being productive at work, there is no harm that you take a 15, 20 minute break and you can quickly call your family um, and, and have a chat with them. So in a way that that helps to stay connected. Technology has made a lot of difference, like WhatsApp video call genuinely is a game changer, especially during COVID times. We realize it helps to have that connectivity to see each other. And second thing, what uh, Ovi said, I will follow up on that uh, as well. When I I usually talk to them maybe two times a week or one time a week, but when I do so, I'm not multitasking. I'm not uh, cutting vegetables and calling them. 
uh, I sit down once a weekend, so to say Saturday or Sunday, I sit down and I genuinely give my effort and time to it and try to connect with them. There is a totally different life that I have developed over here with colleagues, with friends, and I'm happy with it as well. But that doesn't mean that I ignore family time. I also get, I also have to find time to give them time in my life. Uh, so this is what I try to do. Be Get rid away of all the other tasks, sit down and give them the time that they deserve, uh, surely. And this is one way to balance life. And also, usually once a year, I try to go to India. So whenever I get holidays, almost half of the holidays are already reserved for a trip to India to meet them. But I will confess also to eat a lot of food. Um, and then I try to connect with them as much as I can. OK, thank you to the students from IESS High School. Hi to all the students. I hope this is fun. <laughs> Think of more questions. We have one here. Uh, what are the career prospects for someone with your skill set? What is a possible next step? Obi. OK, I know that we'll, I will come back eventually to school. Eh? I know, I know it. Probably not as a, as a primary teacher, but I'm getting a little bit old for that. And, and uh, all these uh, playground duties and all the stuff. It's hard for me thinking me there, um, but I'm I'm positive that I will come back in some sort of role or whatever. But now I'm I'm still ready to keep growing at Microsoft, so probably um, probably uh, learning more and expanding my, the territory of influence. Uh, the good thing about, about Microsoft is that it's endless and the number of roles you can do. I will love to keep in education and I will but I will love to keep helping uh, students and teachers from all over the world. So yeah, a good nice step could be uh, get broader territory so you can help more people and you can influence more and uh, on, on the education community. But that will be a nice next step. OK. And Nishant? Um, what are the career prospects? prospects with my skill sets it's kind of, it's technical so to say with the automotive field um but i would also like to broaden my horizon it's not just the designing controls for cars but there are also many other issues many other technical challenges um parameters that you know need to know about a car and if you don't you try to estimate these are all very technical things but these are also things you need to learn it's not just uh, designing one control technique um, luckily, uh, I think we had this question who which mentors made a difference in your life. I forgot to say one thing, your your uh, direct reporters, your managers, sometimes they they see things in you which you don't know and they tell you to be a part of this project, be a part of this meeting and the ball starts rolling. Uh, my last job also, my manager gave me two, three very different projects. Uh, this driving simulator, racing world, I, I had no idea. One thing led to another and I loved it. So I would like to broaden my horizon in in that in the technical side of it, and what will be the next step would be to slowly nudge myself maybe towards the management side of it as well to to climb the ladder and maybe start to become a group lead or uh, try to help others with my skills. That is where I need to learn management skills. Okay, we have a very fun question from uh, students from Italy. How does it feel to work for such famous multinationals? Obi. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, it's overwhelming. I can tell you. I mean, the first time you're here or when you're traveling to your um, headquarters and that we have it in Seattle, when when there is a city, it's a city with taxes and uh, only inside your office. There is a mall inside my office. There is a hairdresser banks inside the office. The last time I was there, I took a 40 minute, 40 minute taxi to go from one side of the office to the other side of the office. So it is the, it, oh my God, what is this? Okay. Um, so yes, overwhelming. Uh, but you need to put your foot on the ground. And one thing is where you are at the moment. And another thing is who you are. This is not endless. 
sometimes, as I said, I will go back to school and I won't be famous anymore. I will be working to any famous company anymore. And I need to live my life <laughs> exactly as I am right now. So, yes, it's overwhelming, but keep your mind cold. And this is temporary. Life is changing. You need to keep living your life. So don't, because it's easy to get too overexcited when you're in this and thinking, oh my God, I am the king of the world. I mean, you're a worker. It's overwhelming. You're impacting a lot of people, but this is something part, it's just part of your life. So yes, overwhelming, exciting, incredible when you go to that places, but also requires an extra effort. Say, okay, calm down, Moby. It's just a it's just a job. You need to keep working um, because your life is not, it's just a part of it. Okay, I see that we have uh, our teacher from Lithuania typing something. Okay, while well, she sends us question, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about um, what surprised you the most, Ovi, when you shifted from your career as a teacher and you moved into Microsoft, what was uh, most unexpected for you? Um, if, if, if I, I've never thought honestly, but but it was nothing unexpected. I believe that I managed. I've been lucky to do whatever it was in my planning. Let's put it this way, because as we were saying all the time, it's not a coincidence that I am where I am. I think I have worked and I have had the time for learning and for growing slowly and without running and enjoying the process. So when you're enjoying the process, it comes natural. I don't have, I don't have the feeling I am here or I was there. I mean, I live different stages of my life and now I'm here. So so it's not something surprised at all. Well, if you, if I put my mind say from 2024, when I was in 2015, when I was teaching primary five, I said, okay, my God, what, what is this two different per people? But then when you look at the process, well, it's uh, just career and effort and yeah, one next step next to the other. And Nishant, what surprised you when, um, if you had to compare your education between your university in India and your uh, masters here in Delft? You mean uh, what I studied or the method of education? The method. The method. So for me, uh, the reason why I chose to come abroad was because while I was studying and also talking to other students and other people, I realized that the education which I saw in India was very theoretical. Uh, meaning in the technical side of it, you get to know the formulas, you learn the formulas, you, le you need to learn how the formulas are getting derived. So someone, some scientists must have derived it and I also have to remember it and then I have to reproduce it in an exam. And if I reproduce it, I get good marks. But the point is, I don't know how to use it. Okay, I have derived the formula. How do I use it? And secondly, in a company, no one is asking you to derive a formula. It's already there. They want you to use it and solve the real life problems. And you also have softwares which have that equation. So I was a bit, not, not I don't want to say sad, but I was a bit tired of this theoretical knowledge. And I wanted to change it and I wanted to try to learn the practical side of it, practical knowledge. And I felt going abroad would be a good idea because mostly I saw a pattern of same theoretical knowledge uh, in Indian uh, universities. And this was a successful change because in TU Delft, it was completely practical. No one is asking you to uh, learn the derivations. You always have a cheat sheet with you. You can write all the formulas in the exam. No one expects you to remember it. All the questions were practical. This is the situation, how you apply it. You do group assignments, you sit with other uh, students and you do you solve practical problems. That, that method of education was quite helpful. And um, yeah, that was my reason. Uh, to change from India to here. OK, we have a question from the Lithuanian students. Uh, they ask, we would like to ask you about artificial intelligence. What kind of impact for students? 
That is a great, great, great question. Very, very good question. Uh, wow. Uh, look at this. Artificial intelligence is something. OK, first of all. Let me I can help it. I'm a teacher. Let me show you a little bit different that you guys can learn. Artificial intelligence has been with us since long ago. OK, whenever you go to a search engine and you put something and they understand your words and say, um, do you mean this? Because you did make a typo. This is artificial intelligence. Whenever you get a you get a, an advertisement in your mobile phone because you have been searching for headphones and then suddenly it's a lot of headphones, that is artificial intelligence, right? What is new today is generative artificial intelligence. OK, this is ChatGPT, this is being chat, and this is something that I'm sharing with you in the chat that I just created when I was talking. That is the difference, and I don't know if you can see the image there, but imagine how difficult was that? Not one month, I mean, not 10 years, not five years, just three months ago, right? I created an image of students watching a video conference with two people and one woman, or I mean, two men and one woman, and talking to students. Boom! Here we go. So that is generative AI. Back to your question. Um, and they can do text, they can do images, they can do video, they can do a lot of stuff. Okay. And that is something you students you need to live with. It's part of your life, and they will not get get away. This is not fashion. This is not hype now. It's, they will be here with you. So you need to learn how to use it in a positive way, and that is our responsibility as technologies. Of technical people, your responsibility as teachers, and your responsibility as students and future citizens. So, with responsibility, with security, with a plan, start practicing what generative AI can do for you. And maybe we need to change the way we work. Maybe it's not a lot of makes a lot of sense. That, okay, give me an essay about this book because. Bing chat or chat GPT, they can do it in seconds. So maybe we need to measure another skills that are human and only human. Like, I don't know, we need to make it work. So that will be a lot of impact, but we need to embrace that impact and learn and learn from that. I, 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 I mean, this is my favorite topic right now, like uh, all the technology people, but I, I, won't, I won't also share, share the, his good experience on that, about that. Uh, it is definitely a very interesting and quite a difficult question because this artificial intelligence is also developing. It's it's not a finished product. It's also moving on. So no one knows the direction it will take. But one thing is for sure, it will be a part of life. If you look in the technical industries, they are using artificial intelligence. They see the benefit of it. Um, so for sure, it is coming. Uh, Chat GPT is a very good example. Everyone must have heard. Uh, but its impact on technical industry is one thing. Its impact on students is a totally different uh, topic altogether. Um, and I think, personally speaking, I really feel you have all artificial intelligence, all the tools you really need to know how to use them in a way that helps you move forward in your life. Honestly speaking, you can simply cheat as well. You you have to make a report or an essay. You simply type it. You get an essay. That's it. You think you have done the job. Trust me, people will notice. Not now, 20 years later, when someone asks you to write a technical report and you don't even know how to write, then you will realize it will affect you. There's a reason what you do, what you learn in school and, how, and why you learn. Uh, it has its importance later. So really, it's all about those core human beliefs of being honest, being truth, being truthful to yourself, and then use tools like artificial intelligence can can broaden your horizon like anything. Um, there is so much knowledge out there to learn. If you're curious enough and you're honest enough, artificial intelligence can be a great tool for students as well as for teachers. That is incredible. I want to give a plus one for what Nishan just, just said. That is exactly 
what we will be saying during all this time. Enjoy. The path is not the fact of the essay. It's the fact that you need to learn because your life is long and you need to keep learning. And if you go only the results, you're missing the good part, which is the process. So yeah, kudos, uh, Nishan. Super, super good advice. And now I have a mic open about what would be advice to give a student interested in following your path. So we have said, we, we haven't met before, Nishan and myself, and you can see that people that could be successful, but it's not. I mean, it's like we are here now, tomorrow we will see. We both match in the idea of enjoy the process, make effort and learn all the time and don't try to take shortcuts. If you have a passion for something, go for it, but go for it with respect, with uh, hard work, with learning time, with effort, and with honesty with for yourself and for the rest. Let's take the example of again of a marathon that I'm a, a, a huge fan. What is the point of taking a shortcut and run instead of 30, 42 kilometers run 10? Yeah, maybe I go in the finish line and say, yeah, 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 yeah I take it long, uh, faster than you. But what is the what is the goal? You cheat yourself. You so enjoy the process, but go for it. And I said. If you want to be a TikToker, why not? Future is, I mean, I, I study as a teacher, look where I am, but I have passion. And the passion with respect, empathy, and effort is, and I'm, gonna, I, I'm not going to say like these gurus, you can do whatever you want. No, I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> I want to be an basketball, NBA basketball player, but as much as I can, I'm not able to do it. Um, so, Keep for give the effort, be honest, and if you're honest, whatever you reach, you reach it with pride, and this is very important. Nishant? Um, again, very good questions. I'm quite happy to have such good questions to answer as too. I'll try my best. Uh, what advice would you give to a student interested in following your path? Um, I think first a bigger question comes is to find your path. What do you want to do? You are so young. Like I, I think I had a chat about this with Ashwarya before. Uh, when I was in my high school, you have to decide whether, for example, you want to be an engineer or you want to go in uh, in arts or you want to go in commerce side. You want to learn about uh, mathematics, finance, etc. I, I have no idea. I'm in just high school I, and you're asking me to make a choice about what path I want to take in life. This was quite hard, honestly. So I would say, first of all, to find your path. Maybe I would say that that is a good stage in life where, where when you're in school to try all kinds of things, to try and see does painting work for me, to try and see no mathematics is very interesting for me. Try to find something that interests you because motivation is key. You will need it for the next, uh, for the rest of your life um, uh, all the time. So I think first you need to find your path and this path can change because you are so young as a student, it is fine to change that path. Once you have found that path, then I think two things happen, uh, two things will help. One is to do a bit of research what kind of skill sets I need. So for an automotive engineer, maybe what kind of books I should read, which universities are good for further education. Try to understand how you can build your career uh, in that path. And B, also try and get in touch with professionals or people who are already there to ask how how I can streamline myself in, in that field. I'm interested, I want to learn. That's why these student internships are such good idea, you know, for six months, for one year, they come, they work, they see uh, office life. And, that, and then it helps you to shape what you want to be. So I think it's a two-folded answer. One is to try to first find your path, take time, uh, it's okay. If something is not working, give it another year, try to find different things. Once you have, realize this is what my passion then try to get a formal education connect with uh, professionals if possible and develop your own opinion but don't just uh, do things here and say hear it process it google it google is so powerful there's so much to see uh, to learn from google as well and then 
try to uh, try to follow in, in this path. I, I I did the same as well. Uh, it's not like I was born to become a control systems engineer. I I had no idea I will end up where I am, but I was just curious. And moving on, uh, a door came and I would always open it. And yeah, now now here I am working as a controls engineer. We have um, one more question from the students from Lithuania. If you could turn back time, would you choose the same career path? Wow. Um, may, uh, is it OK, Ovi, if I answer this question first? <laughs> Thanks. If I could turn back time, would I choose the same path? Um, so as I said, you know, when I was in high school, I had to make this decision to go in the engineering side and I was very young. I don't know uh, exactly the decision I was making. Honestly, it was also a bit influenced by external factors. It's not so easy. You are so young at that point. Um, I do realize now that I am a people person. I like to socialize. I like to meet new people, different kinds of people, learn different walks of life. So I always felt like hotel management would be very interesting, something to manage a group of people, meet new people. It is a very stressful job, but I mean, every job will have its own kind of stress. You can't just say no to everything just because it is stressful. I would say it's challenging, not stressful, and challenging is interesting. So if I could turn back time, I would probably go towards hotel management side, but I know we can't turn back time at this point of time. <laughs> so I'm quite happy where I am. Having said that, I can go in hotel management doesn't mean that I'm not happy where I am. I'm also equally happy with the people I'm surrounded with and what and the things I'm learning and making. Um, and I look forward to what I can do in my life. Ovi. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm trying to think, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea, but um, um, I think what I can say is that I think I managed to take the next step I wanted at that time. And 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 no, I, I think I think that my life bring me here because. The passion I put in every step of my career bring me here, so if I start over again, and I am being the same. I am the same person as I was. The same passion will bring me to very similar situation. So I am passionate about technology, about teaching, and and no, I wouldn't change. Probably I will work for another company. Probably I will, I will work for I don't know. But I think I will be. I will be part of the edutech uh, industry. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I think so. Is what I love. That's that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, do you have any final remarks, comments for the students joining in? So just if if uh, I, uh, if I I need to take three highlights of this conversation is is live your life with passion, with respect and empathy for the others. Enjoy the process because unlike we cannot go back in time, so the process is part of the result. So now you are in year six in secondary two, but it's, it will be the last time in your life you're there. So take the most out of it because all the learnings, the good and the bad, will form you as a person and the person you will be tomorrow is the experience you're having right now. So take the most out of, uh, out of your day. Some days are better than others, but all is learning. So respect for me and empathy. Look at the world how it is right now and how with more respect and more empathy, the world will be a better place. So you can you have the chance to change your world and little changes make big impact. So Go with respect, with, with empathy, go well with passion. And Nishant? Um, lovely answer from Ovi. I would just like to build up on that. My advice to students 
it's when you said Ovi that the time is going by and it won't come back I kind of felt sad actually <laughs> it really hits you that ah oh, yes I do miss my school days because back in school days you're like ah oh, my teacher is giving me homework oh there is exam why is she doing this why is, I just want to enjoy and play um, and you're angry at your teacher and, and whatnot but it, that is such an important that is the start of the process this process which Ovi was talking about and there's uh, really you you need to build that trust and give that trust to your teacher because that is where she he or she is teaching you those elements of hard work and facing the reality which is always going to help you in the rest of your life it's it's never going to stop it's not like after work life all these things which i learned in school are useless absolutely not so actually instead of getting angry uh, at your teacher because there is an exam coming and there was too much homework actually trust the process be as sincere as you can and give the best out of it learn as much as you can out of it because that will help you uh, build this path that you are going to take which your teacher also does not know she is just he or she is just giving you those tools to find that path so it's really a relationship you build uh, with your teacher which is so crucial um, and just be strong in that relationship and try to learn as much as you can uh, once you have figured it out at a, after that you move to masters uh, or bachelor's masters whatever you want to study and then university uh, your your teacher will go away new people will come and the same process will again happen so it's really important that you start trusting this process because it's been going on for many years and we all have seen everyone one way or another become successful in their lives in their in their own vision whatever they think uh, for them success means so yeah start uh, enjoying this process um, believe in it and a path will lead for you which will make you happy and maybe after 30 years you are the one sitting over here as an expert and giving uh, an advice to other uh, other generation of students so it will happen just just believe in the process i think that's as good as any uh, summary to uh, end this session you both of you have done the summary for me uh, but if i had to uh, conclude this session i think we learned a lot of different things today we learned a lot about the skills required for different kinds of um, uh, jobs two very different kinds of jobs uh, we learned about the uh, the backgrounds of the experts and also they highlighted the importance of social skills in addition to technical and educational skills and also how important it is to keep your mind open and experiment enjoy the process follow your passion and as Ovi said, empathy and the little changes that add up to the big ones. And also, they both of them talked a lot about being honest in your work. And I think that's very important. I would like to thank the schools joining today, the students who have joined us today and asked very fascinating questions, very philosophical, very deep. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank our experts, Ovi and Nishant, for joining today and providing um, fascinating insight on your jobs and your life and giving us your time. We will publish a recording of this chat very soon and we'll share it with all of you. We invite the teachers to join us later today if you have the time. We have another session at 1.30 Brussels time. So if you can, please join for as long as you can. And if you have any questions, just send me an email. Thank you very much. We wish you a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you a good day. Bye. Thank you.